So the first scripture lesson was written over 600 years before the time of Christ, and yet it spoke with accurate detail, wrenching details, about the very experience of Christ being rejected and crucified. And so the gospel description of that day and of that event comes to us in all four gospels, and John's is the latest of the four. And so he's had the most time to process and to prepare us for the story. So listen to this reading from John chapter 19, beginning with the 17th verse and selected verses. Carrying the cross by himself, Jesus went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. And there they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. A pilot also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, The King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. But Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier, and they also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. And this was to fulfill what the scripture says, They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots, and that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And after this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop, and they held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. And then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Thus ends the reading of God's word. Amen. We've heard a description from John's Gospel of Jesus' final hours and some of his last words. But John's Gospel also contains accounts of the many times that Jesus pointed to his oneness with God through I am statements. Even as we grieve Christ's death on the cross, let us take heart from the affirmations of hope found in these other words from John's Gospel. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. O God, God, we we thank thank you for for our our daily daily bread bread, and and for Christ Christ who nourishes and sustains our our spirits. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. O God, God, we we thank thank you for creating light at the dawn of time and and sending Christ as the light of all people in the fullness of time. Jesus said, I am the gate. O God, God, we thank you for opening a path for our salvation and for the sacrifice of Christ that opened this gate for humankind. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. O God, we thank you for leading us with your rod and your staff and for moving us to heed the call of Christ, the one true shepherd. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. O God, God, we we praise praise you for for your acts acts of recreation and for the glory of your Son, who who refused to let the bonds of death have the final word. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. O God, God, we we rejoice in the assurance that that with you there is perfect peace 
and for the promise of Christ to be with us always, even to the end of the age. Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. O oh God, God, on this, this Good Friday, Friday give us patience, patience to remain watchful as, as the shadows fall around us, and give us the strength to remain grafted in your love as we await the first light of Easter resurrection. I've sometimes wondered if we focus on the wrong words on Good Friday. Good Friday services regularly feature the last words of Jesus, that set of seven short sayings compiled from all four Gospels. And yes, those sayings are powerful, and yes, they have spawned a thousand times thousand sermons. Jesus saying, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. Jesus saying, woman, behold your son, caring for Mary even from the cross. Jesus saying, today you will be with me in paradise, an invitation of grace to a dying soul next to him. All of those words are worth remembering. But John's gospel only has two last words spoken by Jesus. I am thirsty and it is finished. And the words spoken by other people just before those two brief sayings of Jesus are neither memorable nor profound. For example, there are words spoken by Pilate when he ordered a sign to be hung over the cross where Jesus was crucified, a sign that would say, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Pilate would have it written in three languages, Hebrew, the language of faith, Latin, the language of the courts, Greek, the language of the common people. It was done so that all would see and understand the sheer irony of what was happening. Jesus, a crucified king. Now, it was precisely the universality of Pilate's sign that offended the Jewish leaders that were standing nearby. And theirs were the other voices that we heard in this scene. They challenged Pilate and wanted to get him to correct the inscription above the cross to say, this man said, I am king of the Jews. It was a way to distance themselves from the scandalous rabbi of Nazareth. It was a way of saying, though one of us, this Jesus is not one of us. They didn't want to lose their positions of power and authority because of Jesus. And their words were a figurative washing of hands of him, just as Pilate would literally do just a bit later, trying to wash away Jesus' death from being seen as his own handiwork. Titles matter. Titles mattered back then, and they still matter now. And that's why Pilate wanted to mock Jesus with the sign nailed to the cross. And the religious leaders wanted to keep from being implicated themselves by the words nailed over his head. And we can't fool ourselves that this dynamic of looking to titles is something that only happened in the first century A.D. Ask yourself, how many people who we read about in the papers or hear about in the news are there simply because they have a worldly title of some sort. They've been distinguished and set apart in some way. Hollywood fame, Wall Street wealth. Right now, over our heads, somewhere orbiting the Earth, three businessmen have bought the most expensive airfare tickets ever offered. Three men, an American, a Canadian and an Israeli, each paid $55 million to ride in a rocket ship to the International Space Station. If these space tourists had stayed at home, and if they'd flipped open something like a Heifer Project catalog, for that same amount of money they each paid, they could have bought 110,000 heifers or 450,000 goats or 2,750,000 flocks of chickens. 
that could have been given to people struggling far below their earthly orbit. And yes, Jesus chided Judas and once said that we will have the poor with us always. But that does not mean we should ever celebrate behavior that shows such disdain to the poor and elevates skewed values in a hurting world. It can be said that in Pilate's inscription there was actually much truth. Jesus, the King of the Jews, was now announced in three languages for all to read. It was the fulfillment of words that Jesus had spoken just a few days earlier when he said, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will be drawing all people to myself. And that was true. It was all the world who could now literally read the words about who Jesus was. And thanks to Pilate's trilingual inscription, he inadvertently fulfilled Jesus' prophecy. And it's also true that Jesus' death on the cross has become a way for people the world over to find themselves side by side, a united and a common humanity standing at the foot of a crucified Savior. And so here's the real Good Friday question. If you imagine yourself as part of that crowd of witnesses there at Golgotha at the foot of the cross, then what words of Jesus should you recall? Yes, remember his suffering, how he said, I thirst, and asked for something to ease his pain. And yes, remember how he gave his life willingly, a sacrificial gift out of love for us, as he even said the words, it is finished. But John has shaped the entire gospel around other words of Jesus. And those words we also do well to remember this Good Friday. And we just heard them all earlier. The famous I am sayings of Christ. That by their very structure echo the words of God saying, I am who I am. So even at the foot of the cross, the power of each of these statements cannot be denied. For every type of hunger, for justice, for nourishment, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. For people who walk in darkness, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. For times when we're not sure which direction to go and where freedom lies, Jesus says, I am the gate. When we are heavy beset and feeling vulnerable, Jesus comforts us by saying, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. For moments when we're not sure upon what we stand and in what we are rooted in faith, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me. For moments when we are pessimistic about the future of our lives or the future of the world, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And when death draws near, whether in those we love or in a somber moment in a doctor's office, Jesus says, remember, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will never die. Now, none of those were the last words Jesus said, but they were some of the most important and powerful words that he ever spoke. And just hearing those words again causes a host of other images from Jesus' life to come back to mind. To remember how he welcomed sinners and, and healed the outcasts. How he blessed children and Samaritans and tax collectors and Gentiles. How he fed thousands from table scraps and caused fishing nets to strain with miraculous catches. How he told paralytics to take up their beds and walk. And how he told his closest friends, in this world you will know tribulation, but be not afraid, for I have overcome the world. So much comes to mind as we stand at the foot of the cross and consider the last moments of Jesus' earthly life. There's a lot of words, times of blessing, moments of prayer, and then the final announcement, it is finished. 
but we know it wasn't truly finished. We know that after that came a time of silence and hours of darkness. But the sun would eventually dawn on Easter Day, and new words would be added, added to this lexicon. He is not dead. He is alive again. And so right now, we've been given the gift of an entire day, a full day, what the church has come to call Holy Saturday, to remember the words of Jesus, to remember his last words, and to remember his earlier words. As you go out into the darkness of Good Friday, I invite you to carry with you the I am sayings of Jesus, like smooth pebbles in your pockets. Feel their weight in your hands and in your heart. And take them out and reflect on them. How Jesus said, I am bread, the vine, light. I am the good shepherd, the resurrection. I am life. And breathe those words in without trying to control or understand them. And accept them in the loving spirit by which they were first spoken. Spoken to each of us. Because those words will sustain you mightily in the hours ahead. They are the foundation upon which we stand when everything else crumbles and falls away. They are the good news that fleshes out the promise of Easter morning. And when they're all taken together, they let us know who we are and who has redeemed us once and for all on this very Good Friday. Namely, Jesus, the great I Am. Thanks be to God. Amen.